Everybody, I'll just stand right here. How are you all? It's good to see you, you all, the family. It's just good to get together and uh, go, you want to go up? Okay. Okay, come on up. Yeah, the, the camera can't span down that far because I'm so <laughs> short, so we got to get me up here. <laughs> so it's, um, and I have an, an awesome opportunity right now. This is a wonderful honor to me um, to be able to uh, present to you a friend of mine. His name is Pastor McDonald Monsa from Zambia, Africa. Um, it was a wonderful time we had in the investors this morning. Uh, he, was, he shared with us the word of God. He shared it with us the work that was taking place over in Zambia. Um, he was actually a student of Bobby over here, and as many of you are. So here's a product of uh, him and Dr. John Sarah, as many of you know. And so uh, for him to be here in the United States, this is a wonderful opportunity and it's an answered prayer. And what has happened is um, he's working with a ministry that's connected with Harvest Baptist here in Blue Springs, and they brought him in for their conference. And so we got him for one day, and this is a beautiful day, and, and uh, amen. And so today after service, um, I'm gonna be taking him up to the airport. He's flying to Colorado, gonna be there for a week with John Farr who's part of the ministry that he's involved with. So I'm just going to um, let him have the opportunity to give a, um, a little testimony and just to share a little bit and to be able to thank you all and be able to encourage and uh, with what God has been doing. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank God for uh, making it possible for me to be here today, this morning. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, it's my first time to be in the States. Um, of course, I've been to Germany before, um, but you have a beautiful country. Um, I've enjoyed being here, and um, um, I just want to thank uh, Harvest Baptist Church for inviting me to come and attend the missions uh, conference, uh, which was a success. Uh, they, they are supporting one of the schools in Akonde, uh, in Zambia, uh, where there's a feeding program, and uh, uh, I was sharing this this morning with the, the investors, and, and I pray that they will also share with you, those who, who are not there, um, of what God is doing in Nakonde. Uh, we take care of the children, vulnerable, you know, children and uh, 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 children that have no parents, you know. Uh, uh, we have churches where we have put uh, uh, a, a church, we put a school, uh, this is the whole, the whole, the whole setup, you know, that children need, need, need a church. They need the word of God. Their parents need the word of God. So in many, in many times when John comes and uh, Gary Phillips from World Manor, Worldwide Manor, we go to these schools and they preach to the children. And uh, you know what happens? We have their parents receiving Christ as their personal savior, you know. Uh, so this is what we are doing. So uh, I, I'm just here to ask you to pray with us. We, we, we need your prayers. We need your support. Um, I'm sure Bobby Bonner and uh, uh, Brian Carwell, they will, they will give you more information of what we are doing and how you can help us, you know, uh, to take care of these children. I, um, I want to say these children, some of them, they have only one meal. What they eat at this school, which is being sponsored by helped by, supported by Harvest, that's, that's the meal they have. And they, they will come to school the following day and have that meal when they go back to their, to their grandmothers. They will have nothing to eat. So this is, what is going to, this is what is happening. We have other schools who are in the bush, you know, where kids have the same burden, you know. So I want to thank Tammy that uh, uh, she, uh, she's, she has given herself to to send a bell of, uh, what do you call them? A pad, yeah, uh, we have age-grown girls in the school, you know, so these five schools, they don't have any support of, of any kind, feeding, whatever, you know, medicines and uh, 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 school requirements, you know, to run the school, paying of the teachers, it's only John that pays the five schools, you know. Well, he does his best, and, uh, and I thank God for John, what he's doing, you know, to help these children, you know. So my coming here just to ask you to pray with us 
And please, please help us so that uh, the children can have a life as well. So thank you, Pastor, for this time. God bless you, and God bless this church. Amen. Amen. So humbling. So humbling. Oh my. So we're gonna oh, we're gonna navigate into a a topic that's always fun. First time ever that you'll hear from me. And I don't know if it'll be the last time. I'm told I'm supposed to do this all the time, but go to Colossians chapter number three in Christ alone. And we're gonna speak of um, the needs that we have and uh it's interesting when Pastor Mwansa puts everything in perspective. If a child comes to school, they are going to get a meal, and that will be their only meal for the day. And now I'm going to speak of a matter for our church, of the meals that we partake in, and that our meals are much bigger, with bigger numbers. And yet there's still always those needs. Most of all, they point us back to the song that we just sung, God, you are so good. You're so good to me. And it really has a whole, nothing to do with us, but a whole lot to do with the Lord and who he is. And in Colossians chapter number three, that's the theme verse of our Acts 1A conference. And I know I reviewed and over, uh, overviewed last week our conference and, and looked at some things, the sermon of sermons, and, and I took a sermon from some of the sermons that were preached. And, and so this morning, I'm going to uh, put before you something that's tied together with the Acts 1-8 conference, and that, of course, is um, that special offering that we talked about and how um, last week I said, hey, I'm going to speak of this matter this week. And I sent you an email out yesterday, and I said, well, from our conference, which was a tremendous time, we have also, too, this commitment card. And hopefully all of you have one. If you do not have one, Chad Brotmeyer, say hi. Everybody say hi, Chad. Fresh in from Serbia, where's your wife? Ah, uh, she went off to a conference. So good to see you, Chad. Thank you for hanging out with us. This is a missionary morning. Wow, praise the Lord. So thankful. For Pastor Mwansa to be here, of course, and thank you, Chad. I know I saw you the other day. I wasn't sure. Hey, there you are. Awesome to see you. But in our Acts 1A conference in Christ alone, we said, hey, we, we want to commit to our missions, which we do every fall for the following year. So this is our commitment for 2023. Some of you, many of you have given to the missions offering every year. I give $10 a week, $5 a week, $100 a month. Maybe that's what you do. But also, we have a special offering down here. Sometimes I put that in there as like uh, uh, last year was we're taking a special offering up for our, our uh, 25th anniversary remodel. And so we said, hey, we're going to do a remodel of the auditorium, and it's looking good. We just have a few more things to do, but we put paint on this for the first time in uh, a lot of years. I think it was 10 years or something like that, and uh, we were able to put carpet in, and so thank you, Lord. Um, we are much more comfortable in America, of course, Pastor Mwansa, and uh, sometimes God has to make us be uncomfortable because those special offerings mean so much. Two years ago... Alex was here, Alex Chippy, Pastor Alex, and, and Crystal, and we took up an offering for GCMS. And GCMS, we still, we've, we've sent a few thousand dollars, yes, and, and we'll be sending more monies as they needed. There's different projects they are doing, or whatever it may be, having from, from teaching the Word of God to the Bible Institute there, to the, the facilities to care for God's property and be good stewards. It comes back to that. So in Christ alone this year, we have a place where we have this special offering, a special offering for our pastoral staff. I said again last Sunday that I would speak in terms of, in reference, our special offering of our pastoral staff. And so that's what I'm going to speak on today. I'm going to intertwine the Word of God, of course, as the Word of God intertwines into us. It's beautiful how it sits in here, and when we finish up our message here in a few minutes, you'll see how beautiful this, 
Basically, this chapter, like so much in Colossians, is really those very simple and straightforward doctrines of how you handle things in the church. And Paul the Apostle, we're reminded, he spoke, uh, he wrote these letters to the Colossian P the church, he wrote to the Philippian church, and he wrote to the Ephesians church from jail. And so you know in his condition, speaking from jail, writing these letters, hearing how they're doing, he's writing from a place of saying, this life that you have in Jesus Christ alone has to be more in the church, in the body of Christ, so it can be more to reach people with the gospel. It's back to, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, that you have a love one for another. When we had our conference, Pastor George Grace walked through many messages. Of course, he started out with the Song of Solomon, and he ended in Philippians chapter number 3, all about Jesus Christ. And so this morning, I'm just going to go through this, and you can go ahead and advance at one time, B, and hang with me for a little bit, and then I'll jump in. Uh, our submission to Christ is how we finished up the last couple of sections last Sunday. Well, this is a message continuing that of how we will submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and we will see how, what does this special offering have to do with me? What does this special offering have to do with us? Because I don't speak often of monies and don't speak much of anything specific in this area. I'll speak of stewardship and caring for the things of the Lord, constantly talking about that, choosing whether or not I'm going to favor the things that Jesus Christ would have me to do or favor the things that would favor Mark Brown. If I'm going to go after my flesh in this carnal life and my beliefs in uh, Jesus Christ, I'm wasting so much. If I say, wow, oh, over here, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think that really I need to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to make my life more of a place of submission to Christ. Colossians chapter number 3, verses 1 through 4, we're going to get you right into the flow of things. We'll go down to verses 14, 15, and down there, and then we'll finish up with the last couple verses in the chapter. Follow along with me. Verse number 1, chapter number 3, Colossians. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek these, excuse me, seek those things which are above, which, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Some powerful words as we get into our message this morning. Let me, let me take a moment to pray once again. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you so much for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving the life that gave us life. The spirit of the living God came into us at our new birth, and we were born alive, dead to ourselves, alive in Christ. We're hid in him, and I thank you that we're hid in you, dear God. I thank you for the testimony this morning of you at work in Zambia of continuing to be at work all over the world through a humble brother and pastor and Pastor Mwansa. Thank you for allowing him to be here and be part of our Sunday morning worship and praise and preaching and teaching the Word of God. Thank you for Chad being here, Chad and Ray in the country for a few weeks, missionaries, a course that we are part of and partnering in their lives. God, it truly is an acknowledgement of your great grace and your great power in our lives. I ask you, in our simple but important time in your word and in this message today, that you will grab a hold of us, grab a hold of the glory that you're deserving, and that we do everything heartily unto you, Lord, not unto men, that whatsoever we do, we do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it's in his name we pray, amen and amen. Think about it again this morning when you and I woke up and had the opportunity as believers to follow after him and praise him in worship. We thought, okay, I guess I'm risen with Christ. What do I seek? I guess that if I'm dead and I'm alive in Christ, what should I seek or how should I go about it? We talked about this last week, and of course, Pastor George spoke of it again last two weeks ago. We're risen with Christ. We're, of course, thinking on things above. 
Why in the world would we do it? Because he's the one that we would do it for. We're hid with Christ. He is our life. And we, of course, as we're hid in him, we're reminded of what we have in him. What happens when we seek after the things above in Christ? Who is our life? What happens? You know what happens? You have the Galatians 2.20 life. You know which one I'm talking about. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. That's the life I live. That's what happens when I seek the things that are above. Your world that you live in wants to pull you down. It wants you to think that these things are more important. Taking care of your children is important, but it's not more important than seeking things above. Taking care of your job and being a great testimony for the gospel is so very, very important, but it's not more important than seeking Jesus Christ above. Nothing is more important than that. If we do that, then everything else falls in line. Romans 6, 11 says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you want to spend your day seeking the things of your flesh and sin or seeking the things that are above in Christ, who is our life? You ever get to a place where sometimes you just go, Man, how did I miss reading the Bible three or four or five days? Maybe that's happened to you. Maybe you've missed for just one day. And you wake up in the morning and feel like, bleh. You feel like the lost old carnal man. You feel like, ugh, I feel like dead. Like I have no energy. Like I don't want to do anything. That's that flesh getting a little bit of ground. But when I seek, when we seek the things above in Christ, who is our life, We have life. How is it that a believer can walk around and be so blah? Because very simply, you'd be just like the people that Paul's speaking to in his letters. And he's saying, stop that stuff. Put on Jesus Christ. Put off that old stuff. You see, when we consider in Christ alone... And by the way, I love that artwork up there. Wouldn't you like to be there right now? Did everybody figure out where that's at? Hawaii. With the sun. No, no, we're not going to. Don't distract me. In Christ alone. It's really a picture of his great ability to make things He's made all things beautiful in his time. And we are in him that way. But in this world, you know, in this flesh, you know, there's stuff that traps us. That being said as an introduction and a leaping off place, I want you to to think again about this little card here. Being committed to missions. Being committed to the things of Christ. If you say, well, are you going to talk a little bit about stewardship and monies and how we handle offerings and things that we do? Yes. And I'm leading into that place of saying, if I do not seek him and seek the things above and remember that I'm hidden in Christ and that I'm alive in Christ, then I come back down to my flesh, which by the way is dead, and I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live. And that I reckon, I reckon myself to be dead. Then I go, oh, okay. I can handle something like that. I can look at this special offering for pastoral staff and say, ah, I see where you're coming from, pastor. How did you get, though, to the point where you decided that we needed to take a special offering for our pastoral staff? Well, all of our Maseratis are in the garage. And we need to have them worked on. (laughs) We're not going electric, though. I'm just telling you. No, it's, uh, it's rather evident after the next 20 minutes. So you give me about 20 minutes, I'll come back to the scripture and walk this through for you. You see, 
God has allowed us to have a neat staff over the years. In January 2022, I was able to come on board um, and be on staff as a staff member for the founding pastor, Pastor Rick Johnson, in May of 2022. I mean, excuse me, 2002. I was able to and allowed to be and privileged to be ordained into the gospel ministry. I've been the youth pastor for a little while at that time and continue to be the youth pastor until 2010. Started that around 1999. I can't believe I just used a 19 in front of two numbers. Did we used to have the 1900s? Is that another century or something like that? Gosh. What a privilege it was. I remember starting out doing that. It's 23 years that I started teaching the Bible every Sunday in that corner room, Michael, over in Vesper, Vesper Hall. Remember over in that little place over there? Do you remember that far back? Yeah, you were a lot younger then. <laughs> you didn't have that much facial hair either. <laughs> I wasn't this gray. Gosh, I went to youth camp with Michael. How many times? Gosh, five, six, seven, eight times. And of course, your sisters. And What a time we had in youth group. But then, of course, uh, God found in his uh, divine sovereignty to move me out of youth group. And of course, I continued to work and serve in the Lord here. And, and a lot of things went on and all that stuff. Enough about me. Uh, in 2012, I became the lead pastor in that summer. And in the fall, uh, unbeknownst to why, we don't know why. We still don't know why. But I, I gave Bobby a call to come and preach, if you remember, our 15th anniversary. And Bobby came out in May of 2012. And at that time, I did not know what the future would be. I really didn't. And as the church was walking through all the things that we were going through, I said, would you just pray for me that I would have some wisdom to go out and come in. I don't know what I'm going to do. And if, if, if anything happens, would you just pray whatever would happen? Would you be interested or anything? But I, I didn't even know. We didn't even know what would happen, how that would happen. Well, God... Again, in his sovereignty and his divine way, laid it out for, for us to be able to start working together in September, October, November of 2012, 10 years ago. It's hard to believe how many years. Dwayne, I think I'm accurate, August of 2014, uh, eight years, and you're still putting up with me. I'm so thankful to you. You are a gracious man. I don't know. I think Teresa must be feeding you some good food to be very, very kind to put up with me, but it is really just a true honor. It was just us three together, and thank you, God, for that. We went through some different changes in ministry and things like that, but in 2020, I put before you at the beginning of the year, would it be a possibility? Would it be incredibly awesome if we could have Josh Bennett come on board uh, to be our youth pastor? And so, July 1 of 2020, Josh Bennett came on board as our full-time uh, youth pastor and, of course, facilities. He's working in uh, cahoots, I mean, in conjunction with Coach and, and all the things that you guys do. Brian Calloway, last year when Brian came off the field, put it before you and, and everybody. Of course, our pastors, could we have the possibility of bringing Brian on board? And so, April of 2021. So in the last two years, where monies are, it was because, and it is because of God's faithfulness in you and your faithfulness to God that we could do such a thing. Is it, I mean, it really is incredible to think that we're able to do such a thing and have these men around. There's a bigger part of this, and this is our part-time staff. Steve Bryles sometimes is just, it's forgotten. He's an ordained minister. He's a pastor of pastors. He's a man that believes that he came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many, just as we believe that. And he has served faithfully alongside, I believe I'm accurate, Coach. Was it in 2013? Maybe even before that? Maybe I'm kind of close? Eh, he's not saying anything. I don't know. But it was around the spring of 13 when we were able to have Coach come on board and, 
and do things with facilities and with many other ministries. And he is uh, invaluable. He is worth a million dollars. And I'm so thankful an ordained pastor as a part-time staff member. Of course, Pam, she'll let me know this week if I've been accurate, but I believe it was January of 15. I looked in the history and saw that. And then Mindy, in, of course, January, excuse me, April of 15 as well came on board. Of course, our precious Don, Pat, Don Pratt went, went away in September of last year, but she had been on board here as a full-time uh, administrative person, uh, office manager for, gosh, I believe it was 13, 14 years here. And uh, God has allowed us to do so many things. Here we are now in 2022 in Christ alone. We're here in a place of saying, okay, God, what would you have us to do with our staff? Well, God continues to show us that these guys are supposed to be pastoring and ministering in your church. And you have approved that, and you have definitely confirmed that that's what we're supposed to do. Well, how does that happen? Well, we have to continue to pay them and take care of them. I am so very thankful from the very time that I came on board, this church paid a salary to me, paid my medical benefit uh, and health, medical health, whatever, uh, health benefit, paid my dental, paid vision, uh, and of course has paid always a little life insurance policy as well. I'm very thankful for that. Guys, this is... Our pastors, you pay for us all to have full coverage on all of our health stuff. You do that. Your regular giving, your offerings, your tithe, pay that. We can't thank you enough. We can't say to you thank you enough. Most churches can't do that even now anymore. And we're thankful. They're very thankful. When you give monies, you wonder how does it categorize. Let me walk out some things for you for a few minutes and then I'll come back to things B so you can take it at the end for me. The regular giving when I use that terminology means tithes from members. Why do you use that term? Because it's a term that we use to account for things. The accounting system in this church is there's no one, nothing better. There's nothing better. We have a full-time uh, CPA. We don't pay him a full-time salary and if he gives us an invoice then we pay him. But we have an incredible CPA who has been doing church stuff for years, for decades. So we're very thankful. We have a treasurer to the board of directors that watches over things. We have an incredible executive pastor who can sing as well. And so you think about having those three. Of course, your pastor oversees things, and I give an account for things. We also have a board of directors. We have a ministry leadership team. We have a mission support team. We have deacons. We have people that watch over things here all the time. We have you. If you have any questions, come ask. So I'm going to answer all your questions today, I hope, or maybe generate some extra ones. I'm going to walk through the last three years. The regular giving, this is just overwhelming to me. The regular giving, which is the ties that we use, the, uh, the regular giving is how we make our budget. It's how we are able to pay for things. Pay for the electricity, pay for the projectors, pay for everything. That's how we're able to pay. The average weekly, excuse me, that was 2019. I need to fix my copy and paste, don't I? That is 2019. The average weekly uh, giving was 15000 $220. The following year, 20, and I checked these slides so many times, but this is 2020. The average weekly regular giving, 15800 so it's almost $16,000, which is beautiful. And there were some special gifts in there that were put to the savings, but the average weekly in 2020, the average weekly in 2021, $16,563. Why does it average out that way? Because sometimes in that regular giving, it might be one big chunk of money that's moved to savings for something special. And a couple years ago, we had a special offering that was a great deal of money that we put directly into the savings, but didn't put it together as part of our regular. Do you understand? It's like, hey, you know, the government sent you $600 a month. Do you understand that? Does that make any sense? The government sent you $2,400. Does that anybody happen to happen to you guys? What'd you do with that? Go spend it or put it in the savings account? 
as part of your income. For us, there's some times that that happens, but our average weekly regular giving was 15, 8, and 2021, excuse me, 2020, and 2021 it was 16, 5. Our regular giving today, as of last Sunday. So that's 41 weeks. The average is 14,500. Is there any difference there? How many thousands of dollars difference is that a week? Anybody do good in math? I didn't do well in English. That's why I said do good instead of do well. If it's a lot of money still, it is a lot of money. But we predicated everything upon a budget. And we set our budget up so that we know what monies would be coming in by faith. This little chart helps you. If you just look in the upper left-hand corner there, we are, in the comparison to 2021 in the first three quarters, we're down almost $80,000. Can you see that? That makes sense. That's just our regular giving. You say, well, how do you see all that? And you see 17, 18, 19. You guys, the other side of this is how faithful you have all been. Thank you so much for always, always, always Make it a statement of God's faithfulness by you being faithful to things that are of. This is your church. This is you and I taking care of our church and what we're able to do to send monies to missionaries, to be able to support a missionary that God sent out of this church at a strong fashion. Hallelujah. For us to be able to support over 30 missionaries at almost $8,000 a month besides designated offerings, which I'll cover here in a minute. That's powerful. But what has happened here in just the statement, let me just say, I've said this before, giving changes when it comes to giving units, which means it might be a husband and wife, it might be a single person. People do go home to see Jesus Christ. They can't give from heaven anymore, okay? People do have job changes. People do move. People then sometimes retire. If any of you retired in the last five years, raise your hand. I heard you're never supposed to retire. No, okay. You retired. You don't make the money you used to make. It's not like those baseball players. Oh, my goodness. They get retirement. They get a quarter of a million dollars a year after playing 10 years in the big leagues. Not bad. I played 10 minutes. They played 10 years. So I got a little bit of that fraction. I told you. I'm up there a little bit. Oof. So here's where I'm at, again, with these little graphs, these little pictures. They just give you a picture of how things have kind of tailed off. You say, Pastor, what does it mean? Very simply, there's people that give a, a lower amount, a medium amount, a little bit more amount, and more. Now, what does that mean? Very simply that I do not know who gives what. I never have, and I never will. I do not ask for your giving statements. I do not take a look at anything ever, and I never will. I don't want to know. It's between you and the Lord always, and I believe that. Pastors will say that. Well, I got five people that I can attest to that that I've never seen one giving statement ever. Never. I don't want to see them. All I may ask is, hey, where is it that possibly the trends are going so that I can prepare and sit down with my executive pastor and my board and be better at taking in what we have and moving it out to missionaries, to the mission work that we have, to regional missions, to the work that we do here, to training people, to teaching people, to the disciple them, the Bible Institute, to everything we do, to ADP Sports, to everything we do, and then pay our ministers. So if we have a weekly budget of $16,288.46 that we need to come in and only 14,405 whatever 500 is coming in, we are short in our budget $1,742.46 a week. You say, well, that's different than the giving and offering in the difference. It's $2,000. Well, you can imagine we can't put any money in the savings. We can't. Because if we budgeted 16288 we took in 166 we could put that 300 and something dollars in the bank, which we have been doing. And I'll show you that in a minute. You see, we're four, in 42 weeks, we are short. 1740 something dollars each week. That puts you up there. 
we also have a little bit of a missions shortfall, which we then, if a missionary has to get their check this month, we make sure they get their check. We'll take it out of the, reg uh, out of the regular offerings, out of the regular monies, which means something can't get paid, or we must take money from the savings account. Follow? You saved money so that you can use it for a good thing, correct? You don't save money so you go buy yourself a boat. There's nothing wrong with a boat, don't get me wrong. But you save that money for your children, maybe for their education or something. But when you get a $100,000 bonus for your boss, then you go buy a boat. Right? That's all right. Go buy a boat. I get seasick, so I don't like boats. Let me tell you about missions giving real quick. Our missions giving very simply is this. It's your commitment above tithe. See it? Right here. Right here. I'm committed to giving $10 a week, $20 a week, $30 a week, $100 a week. My wife and I have been committed to missions in our ministry for years. And we just say, hey, we're just going to give to missions because we believe in it. Here's your regular giving, the building fund if you decide to give, and then designated gifts for. Here's another spot. What does a designated gift look like? A designated offering is a special gift. It might be a one-time gift. Say we need to take up a special gift for Chad and Ray Brockmeyer because they want to go on a honeymoon. They never went on a honeymoon. Well, then we'll take up a gift for it. Do you, is that true? Do you need to, there we go. Oh, no, no, he said yes. But it's a special gift. It's a special set aside. We need to buy a Helux. Well, we're going to raise some money for the Helux over in Zambia. Hallelujah. So many of you gave to that. How about if there's a building fund, beyond the building fund, there's something we need. We need to pay for furniture. We need to pay for something. Last year, we had a special offering. Again, that would be designated monies if you put it in for us to have the 25th anniversary remodel of this auditorium. Our missions giving, though, regular missions giving, which means above your tithe, which means you'll say, well, I'm not going to give to the regular. I'm going I'm to give above, which is 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. Missions giving in 2019 was $62,000. Missions giving in 2020 was 61000 so about the same. So our weekly average was around $1,200. Missions giving went way up. The commitment cards, this came in really big the last couple of years. And so we were able to give more money to more missionaries and support more missionaries. I love that. Again, here, real quick. Everybody... If you don't have one of these, you need to grab one of these. Well, the conference already is over. But in here is a list of the missionaries that we support. You support them. Your giving to missions supports them. We support many missionaries at $200 a week. I mean, $200, whoa, $200 a week would be incredible. $200 a month or $300 a month. Some of them we do. Some of them are $100 a month. But that weekly average grew to $1,700. So we committed with the mission support team and with our pastors and, and everybody. They said, okay, go ahead, pastor. $7,700 a month we give to missionaries and our regular giving to missionaries. What about the designated? If you said tomorrow, I want to give $500 on top of my missions giving to Pastor Mwansa. We will hold that money until next month and then we'll send it to Pastor Mwansa. Do you understand? It's a special opportunity and a designated offering but regular missions it's like regular giving regular giving is your tithe regular missions is above your tithe you say hey we want to support missionaries which is again these are the missionaries you're supporting i don't hide it from you there it is right there again our mission support team has five lay people on it four pastors i praise the lord for them every one of them that's how that works that's our missions, but we have a shortfall of $1,328 a week, so we need to make that up. Excuse me, $1,328 a month, forgive me, a month. So you have to make that up in, the regular, in our regular offerings. We need to take that money. So where do we go next? Very simply looking at an example with a pie chart. The first nine months, 7,700 times nine, 77 times nine. $69,300. The giving in those nine months, praise God, thank you everybody for filling your commitments, was $57,300. We can't not send that check to those missionaries. So we send that check, we take it out of the regular offerings, which will ultimately have to come out of savings in order for us, if we're not making the budget in terms of our regular 
offerings coming in, but we have to send the money to those missionaries. We have to. We committed to it. Well, how are you going to change that up if you don't have any more money? It's, not, it's like a credit card. No, we will evaluate at the end of this year and beginning of next year off of your commitments. We may have to pull back a little bit. Maybe we su uh, support a few of the missionaries at $50 less. We're not going to cut any missionaries unless they're off the field. If they're, not, if they're doing the work of the Lord, hallelujah, keep on, let's support them, okay? So here we are with the savings. It's our last part. Here's our savings. Now you're thinking, how do we get here? This is the special offering encapsulated. Okay? Here we go. Our true savings. Why is it called true savings? Because our savings account might have five or six or seven different things in it. Like in your savings account, when you save money, you might have $1,000 in savings. 300 of it might be for just general budget. 200 of it is for the grandchildren. 300 is probably for the grandchildren. If something came up, maybe 200 of it is for the medical bills. And you just hold on to it. Maybe car repairs. So you have $1,000, and in that savings, you say, this is much, this much, this much. But the true savings that you are saying, hey, if the budget, hey, I couldn't work two days this week, and we're short on our money. What do we do? Well, that's for us. First Bible Baptist Church, we are down $2,000 a week. On our budget, we're down $1,750. So on our budget, we need that kind of money. Where are we going to get it from? Our true savings. That's what it's there for. It's there because we have held on and been good stewards, knowing that one day we may have to spend it. We might have to get a parking lot. We might have to do some repairs in the building. Do you know that we do a lot of repairs on this building? Actually, we call people to do them. <laughs> but we have some good uh, uh, facilities people that save us a lot of money. Coach saved us thousands of dollars over the years. So doesn't Josh Bennett. So doesn't everyone else that pitches in. You volunteers, you, you that work. You, you know what it costs to clean a building like this? And you do it for the glory of God. That allows us to make our true savings bigger. In 19, at the beginning of the year, it was 33. In the beginning of 2020, it was 162. That means that somehow, some way, there might have been some, some gifts that came in for us to hold on to some of this monies. At the beginning of this year, it was 156. So here we are. With all that money saved up from the last few years... We've walked into this year needing that money. What's our savings account look like now? Well, let me show you. We have moved $136,643 from this right here. Can you do math now? It's a lot of money. We also had a one-time savings usage. I did not charge you for the 25th anniversary. Don't you wish now you could go back and get another pulled pork sandwich? Yeah. We have a few more t-shirts, so we give them to you. The t-shirts were not free. Nothing was, but we, we did it because we wanted to bless you because you've blessed this ministry so deeply and dearly. Those are your monies that you have given because they're God's monies. I want to tell you about our monthly mortgage. In June of 2013, a few months after I became the lead pastor, the balance was 25, whew, 2.5 million. The mortgage is now 1.3. Woo, that's you giving. Hallelujah for the cross. Thank you, God. Let's continue to pay. When this is paid off, Give more monies to missionaries. Give more monies to the mission. Give more monies to the gospel. God's, God's, God's just wanting to do that. But we need to be faithful. Well, why does he do it tomorrow? He wants you to be faithful. He wants me to be faithful as a pastor. This stuff is very convicting, but in a good way. If I set my affection on things above. Our monthly mortgage payment is $19,077. Don't you love the world around you where everything's going up? Check this out. God gave us an incredible thing a few years back. We combined the loans. About, that's why this, this uh, year of 2013 is important. I believe it actually was in June, I mean August. That was the balance when we were able to combine all the loans. 
that we had on all these buildings, and it was 2.5, okay? And I, I should have put 8, 2013, instead of 6. We signed, I signed paperwork, 5.25 interest rate. And it's been the same ever since until just a little while ago when the crazy people that somehow were in charge bumped it up a quarter, and now it's at 5.5. But I'm thankful for our ability to pay down this incredible balance of 1.3 will be paid off in January of 2030. Okay? So what am I doing here? I wanted to tell you about what God's word says and how in Christ alone we do this. Look in your Bibles to Colossians chapter number 3 again, verse number 14. I believe it's up there next, isn't it, B? And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. That's where we finished last week, so I'm picking up right from there. Verse number 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. This section of Scripture is so applicable to where we're at in this message from where I started to where we are in the middle. It's very, very straightforward. Verse number 17, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Everything today has been done for the who, Jesus Christ, and the why, for his glory. Everything I've spoken about, everything that came of Pastor Mwansa speaking right here for four or five minutes for preaching the word of God and investors. For whatever happened in youth group right now, it's for that reason. For whatever we would look at in offering or giving or doing a little bit more or, or just recapturing God what we need to to take care of our bills or look at how we handle our pastoral staff, I tell you, Lord God, it still is for this reason and this reason alone that in Christ alone we see these four simple principles. We need to replenish our savings account. Go ahead and go back one. We need to replenish our savings account, and that's what we need to do. But we need to do it while we make up our regular offering shortfall. We need to do both. Can we do it in one year? I don't know. But I'm just putting it before you. So that we can be praying together and say, God, what do you have us to do together? That's all. Again, you, if any of you have been with me for all these years, we've never spoken of such a matter in our church ministry other than indirectly saying, thank you, God. In November, I'll have a Give Thanks Sunday. I'll have a Ministry Appreciation Sunday. We give glory to God and we are thankful for everything that's gone on in our ministry. Intentionally, we do that. While we make up our regular offering shortfall. Again, so that slide that Brian, I mean that Brandon put up there, put on charity. Let the peace of God rule. Let the word of Christ dwell. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Very simply put, I, as your pastor, want to have you continue in his love in his word, in his grace, and say, what is it that I can pray about? I'm not telling you tonight to go home and write a check for a million dollars. I am saying, please pray. Pray for us. Pray for your pastor that I would have more wisdom, that whatever comes, because you are so generous. I, 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 don't, I don't even know. I can't even tell you. <sighs> you guys, it's humbling and truly a privilege to be able to pastor a bunch of people that are so generous with your time, your talent, and your treasures. And you believe in the word of God, to believe in the word of Christ dwelling in you richly. You know what? When it says, let the peace of God rule, very simply, Paul the apostle is saying, let him umpire, let him be the field supervisor over you. In the peace of God. Let the peace of God be the field supervisor of your decision making in the church. 
that the peace of God and the peace with others really clearly lets everybody know, hey, I hear what you're saying, Pastor. I'm with you. We'll do what we can. And if I can't do anything, I'm going to continue to pray. Beautiful. That's what I love for it to be. You know what happens when the new man puts on all that Jesus Christ alone has to offer? I guess I'd have to ask you, for you, do you know what kind of life that is? When you put on, as a new man in Christ, all that Jesus Christ alone has to offer. You are filled with the love and the joy and the peace and the long-suffering. You do operate in great grace and great power. You do understand that the mercy of God rests upon you. You walk it out because you know what? When I say I'm going to do something in the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I do not want it to be a vanity. I do not want it to be of me. I don't want it to be totally contrary to the word of God. What actually it means is this. Just like that illustration that I used last week that I borrowed from George. It's that faith, hope, and charity piece. That that faith comes from God's word. That God has always been faithful. He'll continue in your past. You can say, God is faithful. He's always been faithful. That's from the past. He's got a proven track record. God will increase your faith. Over here, it's your future. You're in God. You're in glory in Jesus Christ. You're going to be with him one day. That is your hope. But what is it about charity is who you are right now. What are you right now? Who are you and what are you doing in Christ? Because again, it says there, and above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. That's a G26, by the way, in your concordance. When you look that up and that word charity, the 26 times it's mentioned, that's one of them. That's one of them. Which is that incredible benevolence love that unconditional, unstoppable love. It says here in verses 23 and 24, and whatsoever you do as I finish up, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Isn't this just a beautiful passage of Scripture? You say, well, Pastor, just a natural flow from last week. That's God. And this is where we're at. Knowing that off of our Acts 1 8 conference in Christ alone, that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. In Christ alone. In Christ alone. The in Christ alone special offering. What will be your response? What will be my response? Together, you know I use our. What's our response going to be? What's ours together? We have a shortfall with some areas? Fine. We'd like to put some more money in the savings account? Fine. In the meantime, let's go. Do whatever God's called us to do. This doesn't stop the work of the mission. This doesn't stop the gospel going out. This, in fact, encourages me to keep on going in Christ alone. Because it says up there on the screen, in the last slide right there, hey, the last two verses tell us who and why. You know I reference this a lot. The what and the how, I just gave you a bunch of what's and how's. What's and how's. What's and how's. How are we going to do it? What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Well, we get the savings account. And we come right back. Colossians 3. Who are we going to do it for? Jesus. Who are we going to do it for? His church. Why are we going to do it? Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. That's why. Our Father in heaven, as we come to you in prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for your word. It speaks a whole lot better than I can. I learned long ago, Father, that I just say what you say. And just say what you've said and continue to do it that way that you'll work the way that only you can work. I pray for this church, this church family, for every one of us that will capture once again the who we do things for and why we do what we do. 
Father, this is your church. And by your Holy Spirit, by your promises and your word, I pray in your faithfulness that you will show each one of us what it is that we're to do. But most of all, that we'll do it together. We'll do it collectively. We'll do it as a church like we've done it for all these years. And we'll do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. We'll do it for your glory because you deserve all the glory. We extol your name, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Please stand. Please stand as you look.